Hi, I am Manny Jacinto, and you are in studio with The Hollywood Reporter. Manny, here we are, season four of yes. The Good Place. Mm -hmm. Uh, very bittersweet for a lot of fans that this is the last season, yeah. but very exciting because the se the pressure has been upped every season. Things get wilder, crazier, and more esoteric. For sure, we're going into weird worlds and dimensions. Um, so I think everybody's really excited to see what is going to happen in season four. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, whatever you expect to explore in this show, it's going to, you know, twist and turn all different yeah. ways. You can't, I've tried to make my predictions, the cast have tried to make their predictions, and all of us have failed. We don't know what's going on in the Mike Sure brain. And you do, do you currently not know what's going on, or have you completed? Um, I mean, in the first season, I mean, it, it, it got out there that we didn't really know what the season one yeah. finale was going to be like. But fortunately, as the seasons progressed, um, Mike was uh, more, and he does this for, for our benefit. So he has been able to give us a breakdown of how the season was going to go. So like when we, before we started the fourth season, he definitely sat us down and kind of told us the direction of Right. of what was going to happen. So we're at a place now where, you know, your characters are fighting for humanity, basically. Oh, yeah. You're trying to uh, allow humanity to get back into the good place. Yeah. So, I mean, we found out that um, the world is kind of a dump, you know, like <laughs> things aren't going well. And the judge of the whole universe wanted to erase everything and start from scratch. But uh, Michael, Eleanor, and the gang have decided that, hey, like, no, let's stop that. Let's try and create this experiment and see if bad people can actually turn good, if we can be given second chances to, to prove ourselves. You know, one of the things that is kind of great about Jason, Jason is unique amongst the four, mm. in, in my opinion. Yes. Because he has a world around him that... Yeah you kind of want to know more about his like Florida man existence yes. from before he died. It is definitely the most interesting to me. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's, oh. I mean, the most fun to play. Yeah. Um, you kind of question what goes on in Florida, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Jacksonville specifically. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, Jason is, is in his own world. Who knows? Maybe there could be a little sequel into his life or prequel into his life, Mike. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, um, but, I mean, we all know that Jason isn't necessarily the brightest bulb mm -hmm. in the room, any room, really, but, uh, he has a lot of heart, and I think that's yeah. what he contributes to this so-called soul squad. How did you feel when you kind of knew that you had to embody this character who was, who's basically you know, not very intelligent, and you had to, like, kind of play that. Like, at first, was it kind of a relief? Because you're like, oh, that's, that's kind of fun to be able to, like, have this, like, affectation. But then does it become more difficult as you go season to season yeah. as the character? Totally. I mean, you can definitely fall into the trap of playing dumb. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I definitely try and do my homework and make sure that I'm not trying to be funny or trying to play the joke because that's the worst thing you can do right. in comedy. If you want to try and make people laugh, you usually don't get the laugh. Mm -hmm. If you want to, yeah, it's uh, so it's like it's a fine line to kind of walk. I um, mean, I try and make sure I do my due diligence to 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 find the truth in all the jokes that the writers are able to create. Um, and fortunately, we have some pretty amazing writers. A relationship that everybody is excited about knowing the final conclusion of is yes. Jason and Janet. Mm -hmm. um, Jane do, you and Jay. do you know how that's going to work out? I we, do. And you can't say anything? Um, all I can say is that as Manny and as Darcy, who plays Janet, mm -hmm. we both want them to end up together. Yeah. Will they, will they not? You got to tune in. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, that peculiar relationship is, is so fun. Yeah. I love being able to play with Darcy and having scenes with Darcy. She's, mm -hmm. she's the best. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that particular relationship, it's, it, it's so special because, I mean, uh, an all-knowing entity and this clueless, 
DJ from Jacksonville, Florida, ending up together, that's like, if, if that can happen, anything can happen. <laughs> right. You know? yeah. yeah, it's a lovely, it's a lovely story. It is, it is. Um, you know, your cast, you spent so much time with your cast members. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you know, you won't be working together, per se. Yeah. Um, what, what will you miss the most, kind of, behind the scenes about working with? Ted Danson and Kristen Bell and I, Darcy Carden. I mean, I've said this numerous times, and, and Mike sure is able to create an environment that's very family-like. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not always the case with, you know, with a show or with a film where you can, uh, from cast, crew, producers, PAs, like they all, um, we all get along. And I think, I mean, hopefully, fingers crossed, I could find something like that again. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just like going to work with a bunch of your friends, getting, getting to play pretend, getting paid for, getting free food. Like that's the ultimate dream <laughs> to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna miss just being able to play with these guys and and try and to, to make each other laugh. Yeah, and I know this is a very kind of uh, tropey kind of question, but you know, who are you going to miss the most as far as like? Uh, the cut, the cutting, the cutting up backstage. The like. Oh, I see. The jokes. The, the back and forth. The back and the, forth. I mean, we all get along. Yeah. Um, I like to. I think whenever I make a joke, I have this weird, almost dark sense of humor. And uh -huh. the guy that I that really gets me and and um, that we go back and forth a lot is Will. Um, you know, William I Jackson figure. Harper. Uh, we. Definitely try to crack each other up. Most of the time, I just end up cracking myself up <laughs> and breaking the take um, and just wasting time. But the thing is with Will, it's like when, as the day gets longer and longer, the weirder and weirder he gets. Like he can, <laughs> he'll start dancing, or like he'll start doing these weird dance moves or like uh -huh. yelling out these crazy weird sounds. And it's like, oh, that's it's Will time. Um, that's it's about time when <laughs> Will needs to. You know, get out of here before it gets it too out. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then and then when when uh, when he starts getting like that, Ted can't help but join in. Like, right, he sees that and he wants to like move yeah. just like him. And, <laughs> um, it's it's pretty fun. It's, yeah, we're just yeah. a bunch of goofs. Yeah. yeah, there there is a you know that fun viral video of uh, Will teaching Ted how to floss. Yeah. were you there for that moment? Oh yeah, we all were. Yeah, <laughs> and um, that's exactly what happens. Will gets up and he does this move and then. Ted sees it. He's like the you know the eight year old that wants to join in. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of pressure for some sort of a, a statement at the end, like a okay, okay, everybody who watched The Good Place, go forth because here's the new. Totally. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, with The Good Place, people will feel as if they've been given a, a very satisfying and complete ending and something that's very optimistic. I mean, with, with Mike's shows and with his work, he definitely puts out projects that are, you know, that are positive and it makes people laugh and like it's uh, cheery almost. Like uh, it's always, whatever he puts out, it's always in a positive, um, good, for lack of a better word, good sense. And um, I feel like Having read the script, like it, it definitely felt complete and mm -hmm. something that people would be like, "Oh man, that's that was a that was truly a happily ever after." I think. Um, I mean, not to spoil anything. Okay. Who knows? It might be completely dark. They might yeah. just switch things up and just be yeah. like, Let's just like if "There could be a time knife involved." Exactly. You know, just switch <laughs> everything, and then we're actually in a completely different world now. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but you know when I read it, when we all read it um, at our final table read, when we shot it, um, it felt very bittersweet. It felt mm. sad, but also, um, but also happy and and like full. Uh, just one more fun question about the Good Place. Sure. Um, if Jason were to run for president in twenty twenty, oh, what would be his platform? Let's see, uh, Jason Mendoza's platform he would um, want more EDM dance parties free pizza he would probably get Blake Bortles to be his vice president what else good is ticket. there it's a good ticket yeah he'd probably make the Jags the honorary team of America um, and 
regardless of whoever wins the Super Bowl, the, the Jags will always just be the champions. Uh, I also wanted to say congratulations on um, being in Top Gun Maverick. Yes, thank you. That's very exciting. We're yeah. all looking forward to seeing you. Now, I know this is a very top secret project, very. but what can you tell me about the experience of uh, being in Top Gun? Um, I mean, I, you know, with that crew and production, you can't, you can never really say much. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is, I've never been a part of a project that big. It's, uh, a lot of moving parts and it's almost intimidating to be a part of it, but also very, you become very proud to be a part of something. Like the, the first Top Gun was, the first Top Gun was such a huge wave and it had such an influence on, on a generation that it's, you know, it inspired a lot of the, the fighter pilots and a lot of the, the, the people who are in the Navy uh, to be where they are right now, like mm. talking to some of them currently. Yeah. Um, and to think that we might have that same influence, we might yeah. have that same impact on this next generation is, is pretty incredible to think of. It's going to be a ride. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the, the trailer or the, the sneak peek that they, that they gave out, but Tom definitely does not disappoint. Tom Cruise is the hardest working man in show business in this industry, really. I mean, to be relevant after 30 years and still continuing to, to push um, in different aspects of, of, of movies, you know, whether it be in action or in drama, it's, I think, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's something, something to inspire, as, aspire to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, how are your volleyball skills? <laughs> Um, they're not bad. Yeah, <laughs> they're pretty good. I'm glad you asked. Yeah, um, definitely brushed up on it a little, just in case. Just before, in case. You know, because you never know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, my vol volleyball skills are have improved. Manny, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me.